Hey everyone, and welcome to the LAN Party podcast. Today, I'm very excited to have a very special guest on, Marcus. Um, he is the one of the owners of uh, an esports team, which he'll tell you more about. Um, and they they compete in a lot of different games. So I'll pass it on to Marcus to who, tell us a bit more about himself. Yeah. Um, hello. I'm uh, my gamer tag is uh, gamers. Uh, literally, everyone calls me gamers. Um, <laughs> I'm the co-founder of uh, the German esports organization Rohsports. Um Yeah, we basically basically come from uh, the CSGO department of esports, and uh, now moved on to League of Legends, Rainbow Six, and Rocket League. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, when did you? When kind of how long were you going for before you kind of expanded into different games? Um, we did like yeah i think three years two and a half three years about before we expanded mm. into league of legends first yeah and then everything became very fast and <laughs> uh, literally between two months we got uh, rainbow six and a rocket league team oh really wow how how do you how do you go about kind of finding a team um we basically have one person for this uh he's searching everything on the mm. on the german esports scene nice. on different sites yeah and just looks for for teams to to join if we say i don't know um maybe we now want a fifa gamer or yeah. something he <laughs> just looks and mm. searches for us is it do you look for kind of complete teams or do you look for players and build a team from that like how does that work? Um, we did both. Um, okay. In CS, we did uh, take our players and build a team around that. Uh, same with the League of Legends team. Um, but the mm -hmm. Rainbow Six, we we took a whole team. Okay. That wanted Excellent. to join us. Yeah, that's amazing. That is awesome. Um, so Ooh, um, uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Bro. Do you have you attended any uh, LAN tournaments with the CS Go um, team? Yeah, a bit smaller one, like mm. two years ago, mm. um, okay. but not not really big ones or anything. Are most of them competitive, like online competitions? Yeah, that you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And where? So, this might be a really noob question, but <laughs> where do you find these tournaments to to compete in, and how does it work competing online? Um, yeah, we basically have in uh, Germany we have one big organization it's called freaks for you um they have uh, cs league uh, league of legends league um then there are like the rainbow six and rocket league it's uh, it's another company it's uh, desbl it's a german yeah german esports bundesliga it's like yeah like the football bundesliga yeah um, and uh, yeah, yeah okay. they organize it's an ongoing everything. tournament kind of set up um just no not but next week we'll we will start uh, with the league of legends yeah league and uh the week after that uh, the cs league will start well, that's, that's cool yeah that's really cool um so how i know we spoke about this before you came on but how many players do you have on your in your organization at the moment yeah, at the moment we have uh, 29 players. It's like uh, 10 CS players, 10 League of Legends players, four Rocket League, and five Rainbow Six. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I guess what are your future plans for this organization? Like, where do you want to build it to? Um, yeah, we basically want to build it uh, like a professional organization, mm. but with our philosophy. Um, we just want um, want to be friends with everyone in this in this organization, mm -hmm. and just keep it just keep it cool and talk to everyone, game with everyone. Yeah. So it's not necessarily kind of about the money. No. It's no. it's just kind of getting some people together. Yeah. yeah. Competing because you're at a skill level that you can. Um, yeah. Did you have you ever competed as well, or do you just kind um, of run it? Yeah. Uh, in the early beginnings in 2016 um, I competed, competed as well in the CS League but um, not very <laughs> successful 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, that's basically when our organization organization started. You yeah. just told us uh, maybe we are not that that good to be to be to, uh, to go higher in this league and um, yeah. let's let's search players that play for us. That's awesome. yeah, that's exactly my story. That's how I started right as well. <laughs> oh, did you? What did you yeah, compete in? Um, we were just like playing tournaments on on the, on the website called tournament.com, stuff like that on top of the and, and it was like the players were a lot better than me. And I, and I was like, God, I need to step down. <laughs> so yeah, I started managing them and Riot kind of popped up. Yeah. It's, a, it's an inter- interesting transition. I think it's something we've, we've heard about before on the podcast. Um, like with Lucas, who was, he was originally, he started out doing casting, but then he realized he's kind of terrible at it. And so then he started going into more of the media side from that. Um, but it's it's a good entry way. It gets you that experience in the industry, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So I do. Think, I don't know. We know we know the ways. Uh, we played the league and everything. We know how yeah. a team works and yeah. what's important in a team. Yeah, exactly. You only get players. Um that are based in Germany? Um, not really. Um, we yeah. have, uh, the Rainbow Six team is, is international. We have uh, a yeah. player from Turkey and um, I don't know really, I think from <laughs> Netherlands. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So all kind of Europe based? Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we mainly focus on, on the German, German teams. Mm. We at least want uh, three players from, the, from Germany Austria or the Swiss, so we can compete in the German leagues. Nice, yeah, yeah nice. Um, how how do you manage kind of all these players remotely? Um, because obviously they, you know, they have all different things going on at different times. How do you all get them together to actually successfully compete or train even? Um, yeah, that's basically uh, basically the. The way we handle it with uh, three guys, um, we have one. The one guy is for CS and Rocket League. One guy is for Rainbow Six, and uh, I'm doing my part in the League of Legends side at the nice. moment. Nice. How do you find League of Legends? Um, yeah, um, it's it's interesting. I, I would say yeah. um, <laughs> I personally I'm really bad at it, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I. Yeah, it's. I, fo- I focus on League of Legends like um, half year now. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's interesting. The the scene is is di- very different to uh, Counter Strike, I would say. How? What do you think the main differences are between? I mean, obviously the game is like completely. Yeah, different. yeah. yeah, yeah but, um, I really think the what the big difference is is like the League of Legends scene is. It's like more more pro. Pro like uh, mm-hmm. the CS scene, in, especially in Germany, yeah? the CS scene is very, very yeah, not not small, but um, yeah, not like many pros and not the the philosophy of the of the pro level. Um, yeah. But the League of Legends is it's really more more pro pro like, mm. uh, even in the a bit lower leagues like Division Three or Division Two. Okay, okay, are there um. Are there bigger prize pools for League of Legends over CS:GO or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, mm. you can. In League of Legends, we can find way easier uh, tournaments with bigger prize pools, like uh, I would say a thousand to thousand five hundred euros. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And in CS, it's not not that easy. You have to have to be really good in CS <laughs> to to achieve these these tournaments. Yeah, yeah, it's um. It's strange that there is such a a big difference because it seems like a lot of people do do a lot of tournaments in CS:GO, um, and I know a lot of there's a lot of League of Legends tournaments, but it seems like League of Legends and Dota have just managed to build this community of massive prize pools. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, in Germany, I think it's uh, it's. Um... It's just a mental thing from from all Germans together. It's like uh, CS. It's it's looked like yeah, I need to kill someone and shoot them and and shit. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, like, it's like, yeah, you have to kill the guys too, but not in the way you shoot them or uh, it's more, yeah. Yeah. It's just a mentality in, in Germany, I think. That's that's a, a big barrier in, in the CS scene right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, League of Legends has a lot of strategy aspects to it. Um, and it's it's super hard to learn. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, how, how do you feel about new players coming into League of Legends? Because there is so much to learn and there's so many different characters. Like, how would you approach go, going into the into the game? Um, just like, just play. Period. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just play. Just play and, um, yeah, compete. Compete with other guys on your skill level. Maybe yeah. try try uh, to compete against guys with the higher skill level you used to, so you learn from them. Okay, yeah, that's a good tip. How would you, how do you, how would you go about finding people to compete with? Like, if you are just a player by yourself, I think that's that's a bit hard. Um, mm. When you have, when you have a team, there are many sides you can you can compete mm. with uh, with guys on your elo and. On higher elo, um, just like prick dot com, or that's that's the site we use a lot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with a single guy playing, uh, I think it's basically just the matchmaking in, in League of Legends to learn yeah. and maybe search for search for guys and on the websites. Yeah. On the forums. Yeah, it's it is a hard thing. I mean, I I don't play much League of Legends because like. I'm terrible at it. Um, I play oh, a lot. Yeah. Of, yeah. I, I used to play Hero of the Storms because it was like a baby version of League of Legends, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I, I played it in the beginning of, of Heart of Storm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's. They, they killed it off, didn't they? The esports side of it. Yeah. 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 They did. Um, I, don't, I don't think that was. I mean. I miss it because I did. I do quite like it, but I don't think it was a bad decision. I think competing against League of Legends and Dota was mm. probably an impossible task for them. Um, but yeah, I play. I play a lot of Overwatch, and I would like to do competitions. But again, it's I can't find anyone. I'm really struggling to find people who want to play with me. Um, even Rory, my own brother, won't play with me. So <laughs> you know. <it's, laughs> It's, it's pretty rough out there. Um, and especially with games like League of Legends, Overwatch, Counter-Strike, they're all very team-driven games. And you can't, like with Call of Duty, you can kind of rock in. If you're amazing, then you kind of carry the game. It's, it's great fun. Um, but yeah, with these other games, they are very team-orientated. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, would, I would say it's um, just uh, build up connections. Via, yeah. via playing it's mm. uh, just the same for me i i built the connection with uh, with the guy we founded uh, Wushboards in cs and yeah we we became friends and mm. that's just build connections okay. and build up from that yeah and kind of go from there like you say once you've got a team it's easier to find other teams and other yeah, players yeah definitely um, so how how often do you do you train as a team? Um, yeah, our teams like um, the we have main and academy teams. It's a, a bit different um, mm. in that direction. Um, the main teams main mostly train two to three times a week. Okay. Um, but the academy teams they try to do it too, but uh, uh, it's mostly the the time that's not not working there. Yeah. So, yeah. All five people together two or three times a week. <laughs> it's yeah, it's pretty hard work to get those yeah. people together. Um, something that that we have been talking about a lot with others as well is kind of education into esports and colleges, universities, uh, high schools or secondary schools, whatever it is, creating esports teams as well. Is this something you've seen happen in Germany at all? 
Um, a little bit. Um, mm. There's this uh, uh, League of Legends league only for for universities, um, but I don't really know how the universities uh, help the help the players there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I have no <laughs> insights in that. <laughs> do you think it's um, it's something that it needs to happen in the future, or do you think the way yeah, it's working now? Definitely, definitely. Mm. I think uh, esports is uh, one of the biggest markets in the future. Yeah. And I think there are many jobs that will be created in esports and yeah, are sure. currently in esports. Yeah, it's yeah, it's going to be it's going to be big. Um yeah. and it's it's trying to find kind of this, I guess, um kind of constant flow of new players coming in like you do with yeah. football or whatever it is there's always yeah. you start when you're like six years old don't you you start like a little little yeah. team yeah. that's it yeah um yeah if, if if this is happening in esports i i think it's making a big step towards towards being like being like football or yeah any other sport or it's sports that yeah. exactly exactly um yeah i think it's it's definitely it definitely needs to get more towards the more traditional sports now yeah. um i do feel the only problem with esports is there is quite a barrier to entry for schools in particular um so if you imagine with creating a school football team what do you need a few balls, a few bibs, and you're, you're good to go. Um, whereas with esports, you kind of need that infrastructure of computers and desks and space, yeah. um, which can be quite an issue. Um, do you think there, there might kind of be a, a problem with schools kind of putting these esports teams together because of that or mm, i don't see really a problem there it's uh, yeah it's just a bit a bit more it, co it costs a bit more mm. you know it's like yeah. you have you have to get the the good pcs uh, a good, good internet connection but um i think if if it's growing esports if esports is growing it's uh, the the money is there for that yeah, I think. that's true. That is very true. Um, uh, one thing I've I have been seeing is um, this guy who runs uh, an esports team for a college in America, and he's been looking for uh, esports partnerships. So, kind of whether that's partnering with Razer or Crucial or whatever it is, to kind of get this equipment going. I think that's is potentially a really good opportunity for yeah de yeah definitely yeah for a lot of people are you are you guys sponsored at all or um yeah we are sponsored for, by teamspeak um, uh, nice. yeah nice. we have an official teamspeak um yeah we are sponsored by uh, a small company that's uh, that's how that's selling um stuff to clean the house oh really okay yeah yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. So how how did that how did those sponsorships kind of come around? Like um, the stuff with the house cleaning. It's uh, basically because it's my mum. <laughs> nice, perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. And yeah, we we sat together and talked about it and said, yeah, let's try. Mm. How long has she kind of sponsored you for? Um, it's like one and a half years now. Okay. Uh, do you think she has kind of seen? A big return on it at all like um i think the biggest big not but um a kind kind of a return yeah yeah so she's actually getting a return on it yeah, um, yeah. and obviously you're not you're not playing these kind of huge tournaments at the moment no. and so and i say at the moment because we know that's the future um i hope so <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah so to actually get a return on that as well is is amazing it kind of shows that power that esports has over mm -hmm. say if you put an advert on tv or something or or whatever it is um 
So what, what does her sponsorship look like? Is it kind of on t-shirts or where? Um, yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on our jerseys, so on the mm. homepage. Nice. Um, yeah, our, our Twitch channel where we cast our games. Oh, okay, excellent. That's awesome. How many, yeah. um, do you know kind of how many viewers you get on Twitch on average? What's um, it's, it's a different, um, if the main teams play, um, mm. yeah, this Saturday or League of Legends main team played a, a tournament for, yeah. for the league, uh, they, uh, they compete now. Um, we got now uh, like 30 viewers. Nice. No, if, nice. if the academy team or a lower ranked team, yeah. I would say is, is cause it's like, yeah, 15. Yeah. Kind of. Half. As you would expect, kind of yeah. people want to see that the highest levels of play. Um, again, going back to football, it's the same thing. If you've got yeah. kind of your under twenty one teams, you're maybe a quarter filling the stadium. Um, yeah. uh, the pro teams, if you've got some big teams playing, it's overbooked. Um, so, do you do you guys stream a lot of the time, like outside of your tournaments? Um, not really. Um, sometimes it happens if we say, oh, "Let's do a let's do a community stream yeah. on a Friday or a Saturday," but uh, it's not that often. Mm. It's mostly mostly the tournaments or the games we play in the league. Okay. Do you think it would be? Do you think it might be worthwhile to start streaming, or even better, would you? Different question completely, actually. <laughs> How do you feel again? Okay. Um, Twitch versus YouTube gaming. Um, I think for the for the live streams, it's it's mainly Twitch, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's remain it's remaining in this position that Twitch is over YouTube. Yeah. Um, but uh, if you want to rewatch something, it's totally YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you think? Um, why do you think Twitch is kind of better than YouTube for your live streams? Um, it's mainly the reason because uh, Twitch is focusing on, on the live streams and mm -hmm. YouTube is focusing on the on the videos. You can rewatch it. Yeah? Right. YouTube is, is trying to get in that in that direction with yeah. the live streams, but I think it's not yeah, it's not that Yeah. Not Did that you, easy to, to, to get to some channels and watch it and yeah there is um you don't have a good overview of of the live streams i think yeah exactly um youtube i think youtube has better discoverability like you can find people yeah definitely. easier um but then it's not quite got the same feel to it it's still youtube um have you did you hear the news i think it came out yesterday or today that um Call of Duty and Blizzard have signed a deal to do all their tournaments through YouTube gaming. No, I actually didn't, actually didn't know that. Yes, so uh, recently they've... Okay. So the Call of Duty League is launching on YouTube gaming now. Um, I think all the Overwatch League is going to be YouTube gaming, um, which I think is it's kind of a massive step for YouTube to start yeah. to trying to steal away this, this content. Um, uh, yeah, face, Facebook tried it in, in Germany with yeah. uh, with the uh, CS games. Uh, you can you could only watch watch a uh, um, German league or German pro right. division, I would say, uh, via Facebook, and it didn't work really. <laughs> it just it didn't work well. I mean, yeah. Facebook is is pretty bad. Yeah. These days, um, what do you think of? Uh, mixer because that's the latest hotness isn't it mm, yeah mixer i didn't really watch or mm. yeah looked yeah. at it uh, <laughs> because we yeah we mainly use twitch and uh, we are confident with twitch yeah we know yeah. we know how the things work and that and yeah it just it just works well yeah yeah um, do you think it's better to stream on one platform only because you can do kind of these multi-stream things yeah. where you can go to everywhere at all times 
Yeah, yeah, we we thought about it, but um, mm. yeah, we just didn't do it because we don't have the the internet connection to do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we have to we have to say yeah one one platform, and we said yeah let's do Twitch. It's yeah. It's, it's the easiest way, and it's the gaming platform, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you um, what kind of uh, software do you use to stream to Twitch, or do you just stream directly through it? Uh, no, we use uh, OBS. Of course, fan favorite. Yes, yeah. it's got to be, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's the easiest way to do it, and you don't have to pay anything. So yeah, it's. Right. It's amazing. It's a, perf- it's, a, it's a perfect tool for that. Yeah, it's a very easy setup as well. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of complain about, oh, it's quite awkward to set up, but it's actually fairly easy. Um, yeah. Uh, f- yeah. 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 Um, I know, I know a, a, a lot of people that say, oh, OBS. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that. But, <laughs> I think when I first started, I found it a bit of a challenge. I was like, yeah. "What am I doing?" And it was like one little thing that I hadn't done. <laughs> I think, like, but yeah. once you've done it once, it's so easy. You can set yeah. up in about a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you yeah. have to work through it. How it works, and yeah, if you know it, you know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Once you've done it once, it's kind of sorted. Um, Find a YouTube video. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Now there's so many videos out there and blogs just being like, do this, and then you take this from Twitch and you put it there yeah. and you're done. Um, yeah, I've been going through this recently. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to stream myself, um, my terrible Overwatch play. I think <laughs> it could be, it could be fun. Uh, that, that platinum life. Um, maybe that's what I'll... Uh, what is the other yeah. thing? Cut, yeah, your Steve, mic just cut yeah. out. <laughs> it's on. Yeah. Is it on? Is it on again? Yeah. yeah. That, we'll, we'll cut that out. We'll, we'll cut that out. You yeah. sound like a wave. <laughs> oh, do I? Yeah. Yeah. It's um. There's a there's a little flick on my mic. Uh, uh. And it just sometimes turns on because why not? Um. So yeah, with your with your team kind of how do you promote your team out into the world um yeah main, mainly to uh, through social media twitter facebook instagram yeah yeah have you what do you think is the best tool to promote at the moment like if you could only use one place um probably twitter yeah okay yeah why do you think twitter's yeah. Um, I think Twitter is good because it's uh, if you watch your timeline, you know exactly what's happening in this moment. Uh, if you mm. use Facebook, uh, it's more like you get some posts from two or three days ago. Yeah. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. And Instagram, I don't know really because I I didn't use Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Instagram is basically the same. They kind of they can show you something from who knows basically apart from stories which are really good um have you thought about promoting on tiktok at all uh no actually not why not um i think in tiktok is in germany not a not a big thing i i would say Um, okay there there are people that use it but uh not Mm. not mostly yeah most people use it i don't know as well because i know I know on TikTok you can link your YouTube to it fairly easily, but I'm not sure about if you can link Twitch to it. That'd be interesting if they kind of added that in, that might take yeah. it to the next level. Yeah. Well, I see um, being able to kind of easily go, you know, we're streaming now or whatever, or watch our latest stream, go in the bio, done, Twitch. Um, so what kind of stuff are you posting on Twitter? Um, yeah, mostly, uh, mostly our, our teams when they play a game, mm-hmm. uh, how the score was, and yeah, if there are news about about esports in general, we post we post yeah. it. Um, yeah. Sometimes community questions. Okay. Yeah. Do you um, 
do you do you record your your games your tournaments uh no no, no. i don't okay really. um yeah we have the twitch videos and uh, yeah our teams watch it rewatch it and via the twitch videos yeah mostly and analyze it and yeah yeah if they if they see something they they record it by themselves via the okay video. okay do you um do you kind of work with coaches or do you guys coach do like you coach the league of legends team um no we work with coaches um mm -hmm. we're currently searching a coach for league of legends actually <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah um yeah we have we have um, a coach for us yes and uh, rocket league and rainbow six we don't have a coach yet okay something something maybe for the future yeah yeah do you think um so what what kind of stuff do you do with your coaches to help make these players better um yeah definitely um just analyze the games and see what what went wrong mm. and even if we win what what did we wrong what could okay. we do better mm. and yeah work okay. some work with some tactics mm. yeah do you ever do um like friendly matches against other teams just to test some crazy tactics yeah. out yeah yeah, yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah uh, probably in in cs the most um, okay some uh, cs you have yeah, i think uh, more options to do very different tactics okay uh, in in league of legends it's yeah you can you can do different tactics but i think in cs it's more more different if you play something different <laughs> yeah yeah of course uh, have you um it, that's a, that's interesting to say because i would have thought it'd be the opposite way i would have thought league of legends would have a lot of options because of the amount of characters there are um, <clears throat> yeah yeah definitely be, um, the the fights in league of legends uh, are definitely more tactical and mm. if you use other champions but in uh, cs you have uh, yeah you have the basic basic setting every time and yeah. uh, can play it very differently so you have an an outcome you want yeah yeah it's um it's amazing in csgo as well to see some of these some players just kind of carry the game basically you have like a 1v3 and then they still manage to win it um what's what's kind of been your your most clutch win on cs uh, um, my most clutch win, it, I think it was on Overpass in a normal matchmaking game. Mm. We were behind 15-0 and, oh no, we were behind 14-1 and uh, won it 16-14. No wow, that's way. actually really, really, really tough. As I played CS, I kind of know it and, it and it's really hard to do so. That is intense. That is the right. comeback of the century. If you lose one game, you pretty much drew the game, and if you lose one more round, you lost the whole game. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was a it was a cool cool moment uh, because everyone was down, and then one guy just stepped up and said, "Come on, guys, let's do it." Uh, yeah, let's fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, built the hype up, and you, yeah. you smashed him. Which it's uh, it's amazing to see things like that kind of the comeback, which I love. It's incredible. What's uh Silas, have you had any crazy clutch wins? Oh god, I really need to think. <laughs> well, I don't think any of them are as crazy as uh as Marcel's. Yeah, this is true. I I can't say I, I've had any clutch wins. I'm just uh I'm just amazing every time. I've had a few. Have you? <laughs> Tell us Raw. What yeah. one on CS, Or are you just or... disappointing every time? Yeah, probably that. Uh, I'm probably getting um... hard carried every <laughs> single match. <laughs> 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 uh, modern warfare you know you go in you'll be t playing like something I don't know like search and destroy yeah and it's you gotta win six on that one uh, I don't know how many is in CS is it six matches you gotta win uh, uh, no it's uh, 16 rounds 16 rounds yeah okay. oh is it 16 rounds right it's a lot shorter on Call of Duty mm. Um, for me, it's six, but it'll get to like the fifth one. So if they win the next one, they've won. 
Yeah. And then they would have smashed out six ones. I'm like, yes. 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 Winner. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken. But dinner. I love it. I think the best one I've ever had <laughs> is when, um, yeah, the best one I've ever had is when we were, it was um, five nil to the opposing team. And then the last six rounds, all of my team mates died and I just took out the rest of their team, like the no whole way. of their team. Six rounds. No I was like, I'm going to win this. <laughs> and these guys were just shouting. I think there's some French folks. I'm like, oh, are you? <laughs> all I, I love do that. is just screaming down the yeah. microphone. I love the hype you get. It's like at one point, there's one guy in front of me. Oh, I do as well. Well, there's one mm. guy in front of me, shot him. And then I ran out of ammo and I spun around and I had to quickly flick my pistol, shot him, and then look back around. And then another guy was there. But then I didn't have anything. So I just had to use a throwing knife and was like, I hope it works. <laughs> it was mad. Like it was a... so intense. But yeah, I love it when you get those mad wins. Just like a scene from John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Um, when in this kind of situation, it's like everything works. Everything they do, it works. Yeah, yeah. You just, something is just clicked in your brain. That yeah. Everything, every shot you fire is perfect. Maybe maybe it's the game having pity. I think it's sometimes as well. <laughs> partly that, and I think it's like this is something that I've had a lot of discussion about in the past. When you're a better player, it means that your like hit count is going to be a lot smaller, uh, mm. like market than a worse player. And um, also, I think it's a mental thing. Let's say that you are doing five nil, uh, like the opposing team are. Yeah. They get a bit ahead of themselves, like, oh, this is easy, we're going to win the next one. And then you win one, like, oh, whatever, second one, eh, whatever, third one, yes, yeah, still, we only got to win yeah. one, whatever. And then it gets the fourth one, like, oh, damn. <laughs> and then <laughs> they start getting toxic. Like, and... Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they start stressing, so they just mm. break down. Yeah, it's true. It's like... Which I love doing to people. Yeah, I think it's... Esports isn't just the battle of who's most mechanically better. There's also that moral battle, isn't there? Of, yeah. Like you said, you, you had one guy who just was like, come on, guys, we've got this. Let's win this. And you managed to pull it out of the bag. Uh, I know um, the CSGO team Astralis, they they have a uh, own coach for, for these mental situations. Really? Yeah. yeah. That is mad. It's, um, we've... Um, I've seen a lot of stuff around kind of the health of esports players. Do you do you guys kind of go into getting these players into the gym or getting them to eat right or do you kind of do that stuff yet? Or? Uh, no, not not yet. Not no. Yet. Yeah, we've got um, yes. someone on in a couple of weeks who's started designing like a, um, a supplement or kind of I guess it's like a protein powder supplement thing for esports professionals, which I think is really interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds so, interesting yeah. yeah, so it's less about kind of being buff and more about kind of getting your brain Yeah, Yeah, yeah definitely. If you, you, if you don't feel all right, you, you don't play all right. It's... Yeah, yeah. Have you got any, any tips or tricks that help you kind of get out of a bad mental situation when you're kind of losing, you think, oh, I need to win this? Um, I think that is the fault if you say I need to win this. this yeah. I think then, then you have, yeah, you have you have no, no open brain and can can't think. Yeah. Can't think uh, on the on the exact situation because you said to yourself, yeah, I need to win this right now, yeah. and just just relax and reset and say like it's zero zero. Yeah. Let's begin. Yeah. Just start fresh. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I just uh, I just rage quit. <laughs> just like nope, <laughs> flip the table. See in the middle of a tournament, <laughs> Steve becomes a pro player. They're winning. He's like nope. <laughs> <laughs> Push their monitors down and be like, oh, you can't play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that's so exactly how I I'd love to see that like, a professional tournament. <laughs> just see a pro player. See like what's his name. Um, is it rec um, re records or something in Fnatic? Just flip a table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> flip table. They're probably bolted to the floor as well. So he's really trying. He's like, ah, got to flip the table. Yeah. Uh, I saw it in a 
a couple of uh, CS tournaments, uh, pro, pro CS tournaments, mm. where they break the table with their fist and they smash really? the table and just the table breaks. No way! Yeah. Oh my word! That is mental! That's the last. I have to look it up after. <laughs> yeah. I need to... Do you think they bring in replacement tables? Yeah. Do you think they actually have this thing at eSports or Do you think they have replacement... They must have replacement gear, there's no doubt about it, but they... like a replacement yeah. table. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought you'd have that. I'd just be like, well, you've got to play on the floor now. That's... You did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, on, like, I think chair, it's... Like, uh... Chairs, like you've got one chair for yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it was... On one time it, in the, in the half... Our final of uh, the CS major, mm. um, one Brazilian player break, uh, broke his mouse because he smashed it. Um, no. Uh, Do they? Uh, um... There were there were guys that saying, "Yeah, <laughs> it's his fault. So let's play on." And uh, but yeah. uh, they made a technical pause and replaced the mouse. But oh, come on! Uh, they, uh, yeah, there, there was a bit of, a bit of a twist between the community in this situation. Yeah. Do you ever, because I know obviously there are kind of like referees in esports as well as normal sports, which um, is not something that's brought up a lot. But do you think behavior like that should be kind of punished with some kind of ban or something? Mm, yeah, I think uh, definitely. Because if you if you're toxic, it's yeah, uh, it's it's just not. Showing that you that you're a good person, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah if, exactly. if you if you break the break your mouse because you're mad, that's yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's it should be punched. Maybe uh, yeah. You have to pause one game or. Yeah, something like that. Or I don't know. Maybe you're banned for a couple of matches, like you would be in yeah. football. Um, so they have to find a replacement player, which can obviously mess up the whole team flow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's. It's something I think esports needs to look into because if they're going to go mainstream, I think stuff like that is going to really hinder them. There's going to be kind of parents being like, oh, well, I can't have my kids watching these players hulk out and smash tables. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's... Uh, 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 I, don't, I don't know, it's... I think I think it's it's coming by itself. Huh? Mm. If, if these situations happen, they're going to be a discussion. Yeah, we need some referees or or shit like this. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's coming by itself. I think. Yeah, it it'll it'll definitely get that. Um, how about um, it's a weird one, but how about VR? Do you think that will ever hit mainstream esports? I really want it to personally. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think uh, VR is uh, is going to be a, a mainstream thing. Um, I think it's it's really cool. Mm. You know, I I didn't uh, get to it to use it or test it, but uh, I think it's a really cool thing. But um, I don't know. I think like how it is like uh, like now. It's not eSport ready. I would say no. It's it's great, but it's quite, it's quite idea, clunky. Yeah at the moment yeah. i think um there's there's potential there but i th i think the uh, what what the technology would have to do to enable a proper esports match would just be insane and probably yeah. not possible apart from maybe in kind of i guess as racing esports uh, yeah, I, I could i could see that, that. Yeah, yeah something like that um you know, farming simulator. I heard that's an eSport <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah farm, farming simulator is a really big thing in Germany, actually. Is it? That is interesting. Yeah, at, at, least, at least in my in my region. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot of farmers here. And okay. yeah, <laughs> I don't know. The, uh, when, I, when I go to school, or when I did go to school, mm. uh, like the, the kids from the farmers, uh, they came from school and that for the PC and played farming simulator. <laughs> no way. It's like, yeah, it's <laughs> that is that's incredible. Like, it's not a kind of game you would have thought would kick off. Um, yeah. Out of all the games there are, I don't, I don't know. I, how, do you know how the farming simulator esports works? Have you, no, I, I don't. I don't really know. It's, it's yeah. It's something I need to look into. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> to see what what's what's happening with it 
Um, maybe it's like uh, the first to get uh, two fields yeah. finished wins or I don't yeah, know. something like that. I don't know I don't what know. works. Yeah. Kind of who can harvest the most in ten <laughs> yeah. minutes? Yeah. I, I don't know. So maybe they actually do battle. Maybe they do like farming tractor jousts or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be See awesome. these two guys. Let's <laughs> go really play like a duo. Come on, like. Or well, they try and simulate Rocket League. <laughs> Rocket League with tractors <laughs> and hay bales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with a goat. I can imagine it being like Robot Wars. Yes, it will be. Oh. A- Robot wars, but you just got like tracked and yeah. like, oh shit, it's coming in. <laughs> Throwing trees at each other, spitting corn <laughs> in each other's face. I don't know. Um, this should be a game, you know. I think that'll go viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Farming battles or something. Farm, like farm battles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No joke. <laughs> but but there's actually, there's actual a uh, German pro football team mm. with uh, uh, which has um, esports. Uh, they have two guys for playing, especially in the farming league. Do they? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Eintracht, Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, they play, no. uh, play in the Bundesliga. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's weird. You said they're football teams. Yeah. That's a really strange... Um, why don't they play football like eSports? Um, I really think Eintracht Frankfurt doesn't have a FIFA player. There are many, many German clubs uh, that that have fifa players okay um, yeah and uh, big esports esports scenes yeah especially schalke 04 with two league of legends teams nice nice yeah. that's but again. It's, it's it's coming it's coming along in germany with the with the yeah. football clubs and everything they they start to start to invest in esports yeah do you think that potentially esports is going to kind of overshadow your traditional sports eventually? I don't know. I think the traditional sports uh, will ever will ever be there. Mm. Um, yeah. But I think uh, esports is it's coming along. It's Yeah. It's it's growing fast and may, maybe someday it's it's more popular than the traditional sports. Yeah. But not for a not for a while at least. Yeah. Um it's it's quite nice to see these football teams creating esports teams because they do have the money behind them to actually yeah. kind of get these teams together which is one of the issues kind of trying to get an esports team together it does take money it does take time um i don't know uh, i don't know about uh, some tournaments i don't know about the tournaments you play in but i know quite a few tournaments have like a buy in so you have to pay to actually enter the tournament to start with yeah, um, in these leagues in Germany, mostly not. Yeah, there are some some tournaments that that have a buy-in. Um, our League of Legends Academy team is playing in one one league where if you a small buy-in, it was like six euros, I think. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's for the prize pool at the end. So the yeah. first three or four four teams get a bit from the prize pool everyone paid in yeah it's a, it's a good way to kind of yeah. build a prize pool yeah. if you've not got a lot of sponsors or anything like that um it's a good way to build it for sure um so with i assume csgo is kind of your favorite game right um yeah it, it was it was a long time my favorite game mm. but overall from every game I ever played, my favorite game I would say it's uh, Need for Speed Carbon. Okay. It's, uh, I'm a, I'm a big Need for Speed guy. Um, I love cars and tuning and everything. That and, is yeah, awesome. I think it's it's my favorite game overall. Yeah. So how did you go from kind of Need for Speed to CS:GO then? Ooh, I I don't really know <laughs> know how how that that transition did. Um, yeah, I, I played mostly on the PlayStation. Nice. And mm. Yeah, I got to the PC via Minecraft. Yeah, awesome. And the gateway drug. Yeah, yeah, and 
and then started playing CS and everything came along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it kind of gradually falls into place. Um, do you do you ever kind of play like Fortnite, Call of Duty, or if you're playing a shooter, you play CS? Mm, I play, yeah, I, I, I play CS and yeah. uh, Call of Duty, but f Fortnite, uh, I, I don't like Fortnite. <laughs> <That's Yeah>. it. <laughs> it's, I, just I not, it's just not my style. Same yeah. here. I like the, yeah. the Save the World game in Fortnite. Um, but not the actual battle royale stuff. Yeah, I, I like the battle royale mode. I I I like. I played PUBG a lot. Mm. Um, but yeah, just uh, just the style of Fortnite, how it how it plays in the battle royale, uh, I don't like. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's it's quite cartoony. I think it's. Yeah. I think the style of Fortnite has been one of the factors that have helped it grow so big. Um, Definitely. Yeah, it's. It's poppy, it's colourful, you can play it as a 10-year-old and it's not like blood coming out yeah. of people's faces or something like that. Um, so it's fairly kid-friendly as well, which is nice. Um, so I think, I think that's kind of all the questions or the main questions we have for you today. Um, I do want to wrap it up with a final cheeky question of what your favorite gaming snack is? Um, I don't really snack while gaming. I, oh. I don't really do it. So. That is unconventional. It's, yeah, it's mostly <laughs> when I watch videos or yeah. you know, YouTube, Netflix, something. Okay. But while gaming, I really don't, don't eat. No, it's just like focus on the yeah, games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you kind of, do you play for a long time? at a time or do you do like little short uh, I, I do little short breaks uh, sometimes mm. it's uh, yeah when I when I want I, I game two to three hours yeah. but uh, it's not not every time mostly it's just one game then like make a break for five to ten minutes and okay okay that's interesting um, do you because I know uh, like uh, with CS and stuff kind of it takes might take a few games to kind of warm up to get into the into the flow. Do you think taking those breaks helps, or do you think it hinders your performance? Um, for me personally, I think it helps. Uh, mm. I do like if um, when I played in in the in the German league, uh, I did a little a little bit of warm up right before the game, so mm. I just shot some bots and yeah, yeah, get a feeling for the mouse and yeah, yeah, and then directly start into the game but yeah okay. if i casually game i i think it's it's best for me to make little breaks and get yeah. refocused yeah yeah that, that makes a lot of sense you know it's kind of going back to that mindset thing we were talking yeah. about earlier whereas if you're if you have a loss then at least taking that five minute break kind of lets yeah, you yeah. chill out and come back to it fresh which is nice um so Finally, at the end of the podcast, we always give 30 seconds to a minute to promote whatever you want to promote, if that's your team or whatever it is, just go ahead and promote away. Um, yeah, um, check out Raw Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, follow us. And yeah, yeah. especially if you're, if you're a German person, we mo mostly post in, in German. But nice. some, some things, uh, well, sometimes we post in English and yeah, yeah, but mostly German. Yeah. Are you looking for any partnerships at the moment? Is that something that if yeah, someone yeah, definitely. if if, uh, if you're partner? interested, hit us up. Awesome. And let's talk. <laughs> awesome. So um, to anyone working at Corsair, if you're watching this, <laughs> let's get a full. Or oh, anyone who at Farming <laughs> Simulator. Yeah. If anyone at Farming and, uh, Simulator think... wants to take us on our ideas. <laughs> yeah. And then, really... and then partner with, the, yeah. with the, these guys. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll get them to do a farming simulator league. It'll be great. It will be great. Yeah, um, we'll get a team. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it Titans of Farming. It's perfect. It's perfect. Or Farming Titans. You, you can't lose it. Um, <laughs> 
So um, that's that's everything for today. Um, thank you again for for coming on, Marcus. It was really interesting talking to you. Um, Thanks for having me. And we'll drop all the links for Marcus's team and everything down in the description so you can find them. And we'll see you on the next time. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, thank you for listening to the Land Party podcast. We hope you've enjoyed listening to it as much as we've enjoyed recording it. It's amazing talking to these incredible people. We are always looking for more people to come on. So if you're in the esports industry, just get in touch and let us know you're interested in coming on board. Also, Land Party is a project that we're working on right now. And we are currently looking for investment to make it even more of a reality, to speed the project up, to make it better than it could be with what we've got at the moment. And we're also looking for developers who maybe want to come on board and work with us on creating this new technology that's going to change the face of esports. So if you're interested in that, let me know, just drop us an email and we can start the conversation.